first service call of the day here. Got a Mac here, it's got a check engine light on, so we're gonna get the codes pulled out of it. All right, we've got one active code in it for the coolant level. So we'll go ahead and hop out and take a look at the coolant level sensor in this. Well, I checked the coolant. It was low, just below the sensor, so I popped it up. Go clear that code out and see if it's still going to throw a code for the coolant level in it. If not, we'll let the customer know and see if they want to do a leak check on it. Otherwise, they should be good to run it again. It wasn't very low. I put about a half gallon in. Went ahead and cleared the code, started the truck back up. We're not showing any active faults in it. So I'm going to sit here with it for just a little bit and let it run just to make sure that we're not going to have any other issues with it. Give it a little bit of time to see if it's going to come back, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. I looked up inside of that coolant bottle and you can see the end of the sensor in it and it wasn't under the coolant. So figured we'd be good once it topped up. We just kind of got to figure out where it's leaking from. But this customer works on a bunch of their own stuff. They don't have a scan tool though to be able to scan their own trucks. So we'll have to see if they want to figure out the leak on it or if they want us to do it. Checked with the customer. He said he'll look at the leak, keep an eye on the coolant level, and uh, we'll go from there. So they're happy with that one. So off to our next service call. Well, the second service call of the day was a uh, pretty quick one. I was only on site for maybe 10 minutes. It's a backhoe that we're probably gonna end up having uh, brought to the shop, whether we have to go get it with the trailer or he wants to bring it over. The right rear wheel is locking up on it and it's making a terrible noise when it does it. So we're gonna go ahead and have that brought to the shop to mess with it. We'll go from there. But now we're heading out to our third service call of the day, which is uh, one of the farms we work on. They've got a Detroit 60 series and one of their semis got a pretty good oil leak coming out of the oil cooler. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that one apart get the oil cooler resealed on it today and then while we're there I have to replace that pressure switch on a tractor so nothing too crazy for the rest of the day but should probably fill out the rest of our day. I was kind of hoping when they said they got it in the barn they meant just the truck but oh well at least it's inside. Got the coolant draining out of it and you can see the puddle it's already left down there so we'll start getting everything we can apart on this oil cooler here and get it ready so that we can get it off the truck and get it resealed. Getting these oil filters out of here. Unfortunately, I forgot my big strap wrench and all I brought were my pliers, so this has been fun to get out of there. It looks like I'm going to have to hurry up, too, because it looks like my second five-gallon bucket's almost full of coolant over there. Get this filter dropped out of here. And we'll uh, get that shut off. I'll have to go grab a third bucket out of the truck. I th think these T800s hold like 13 or 14 gallons total. So... Should be good on coolant storage. Coolant in this truck is not bad, so we're gonna go ahead and reuse it. Get that filter out of there. There we go. I we did without making a huge mess. These things have two filters on them, and uh, they're kind of fun to get up in there. So we got both those coolant lines off there. We need to get that oil fitting off right there that goes to the line of the turbo. I've already loosened up these two hoses right here. They're coming out of the back of the water pump off the gear train. Once that's done, there should just be two bolts, one up top and one down below that hold the cooler against the block. Then I should be able to get a pry bar in there and uh, get that thing walked off the block and we'll drop it down out the bottom. I believe that's the way it's gonna have to come out of there, it's out the bottom. And then, uh, get it on the back of the truck and we'll get it resealed. Now the problem this thing's having is it's leaking oil out of it but if you're gonna work on it we're gonna go ahead and just reseal the entire thing. There's no point in just fixing the oil leak and not splitting the core apart and resealing it and doing all that while we have it. Got the cooler off the truck here and as you guys can see by all this stuff here and how it's not just caked like everything else. Oh, careful I don't want to get that down in there. That uh, this seal right here is the one that had failed. So that was the uh, main oil seal right there. Goes against the blocks, so that's where our oil leak was, but we've got a problem. 
these O-rings, that's the replacement, so we're going to have to run back into the city and uh, go get those exchanged. And hopefully Young and Son has them because that thing's hanging out of the shop right now and it's going to storm tomorrow, so they probably don't want it just sitting halfway out their door. Seems like every time you're supposed to get somewhere within like 15 minutes of when they close, this is what happens. I went ahead and called them though. They're supposed to be staying late to make sure that they're going to be there when I get there so I can get these seals tonight because we're still trying to get back out there tonight and get that semi finished. We've got storms coming tomorrow so I really don't want to be out there tomorrow in the storm doing it. I'd rather do it now while the weather's good. Made it with like eight minutes to spare. Got the cooler hung back in the truck now, so we're gonna work on getting the bolts to the engine tightened down and get it set before we go much further here. So the cooler bolts got torqued down to 28 foot pounds, the ones that sandwich the cooler together. So I'm gonna look at the shop manual real quick, see what the uh, once the engine block get torqued to, then we'll get all that put back together real quick. Got it filled with coolant. Just finished the oil change. Should have everything done here. I'm just gonna do a quick once over, make sure we didn't forget anything. Still need to put a zip tie up there on the uh, EGT probe wire, but I think it's ready for a startup. Fan looks really wobbly to me. 